I want to keep up like a just like the random <sighs> random lyrics that'll just pop into my head for no reason. And you're like, wait, okay, what is that song? <laughs> is there actually a so song? So you realize you didn't lyrics? share the actual link, right? Because there's no s- thing that popped up. I mean, I'll go check that. Like it popped up on mine, like as like me sharing your share. <laughs> yeah. See that that's that's what I'm seeing. Oh, that's strange. I mean, it is kind of weird, like Inception post, like right there. I was. Yeah, but like even when I click on my post, it's not there, the picture or the. Well, I'm deleting my post. Plus, here's the other reason why I took it off of the the TV. Something I thought about is if one or two people are looking at the chat and they start laughing at something funny that's said, I can repeat it for everybody, mm-hmm. and thus it's on the recording. If it's up there, then we're all just kind of pointing and laughing, and then then you have to nobody or it may get missed, and everyone's like, "What are they laughing at?" Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, we're so awesome, we crack ourselves. Uh-huh. No, you're not. I said we collectively. I'm mooching off your guys' awesomeness. Okay, so I'm I was underestimating my awesomeness. Okay. Actually, that's not true. I do not underestimate. <laughs> All right, Mr. Humble over there. I mean, <laughs> I'm awesome. <laughs> I'm better than y'all. I'm just a cool guy over here, being doing cool wow. stuff. Wow, being cool, just, just <laughs> right. Wow, jeez. I didn't even. I, there was no comparisons. I just said I was awesome. What happened? Your wife just said she's better than all of us. Well, she is. Except for Colin. Oh, except for me. He's, he's <laughs> I am king. king. Hi, Eric. I don't know who's in the room because I can't Eric see said hi. Anymore. Well, if only there was a way that you could see the chat. Yeah, I have to go to Mob Crush and that's stupid. <coughs> it's literally the same thing. As if it's we have the but technology. But I don't want to have it on my phone. I need my I need my tablet. Whose fault is that? Mine, because I forgot to bring it. Mm. You gonna soundboard it up? Yeah, I I, I slid you the soundboard like twenty minutes ago. But the soundboard. did it discreetly. That's right. I literally went, uh. <laughs> he did. He says, here. <laughs> These, the, they go away for a month and right. then it's total not amateur month. hour. We went away for one week. It just well, happened you went to... away from this room for a month. Okay. Don't, it's literally been a month. <laughs> well, no. Yes. Yes. Because we recorded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> because there was an entire week between when we recorded and when he edited the episode. So, yeah. OK, never mind. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. It's been a month and a half since he's been here. Well, I was this, here last week. this show, this show been in this room. I spent so much time in this room. <laughs> Blood and sweat and tears. Yeah, that's what it says. Like if we Mostly sell the, tears. We, when we sell the house, you're gonna be like, "Hey, I get some of that, right?" <laughs> I'm stealing all the outlet covers. <laughs> <laughs> Those belong to me. All the outlet covers, all the little fascia pieces. For, huh? Did you buy them? Um, sweat equity. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All the little like covers over top of the the Light switches. Switch covers? Yes. Mm-hmm. All that belongs to me. <laughs> I definitely did. Working. It's yeah. loading up. Oh, I guess I can hit cancel on that. Steam was like doing stuff. Uh, that's weird. Colin wanted to play a game while he was. Uh, yeah, I know, right? I mean, you put a computer in front of him. So there you go. This thing was not wanting to tighten in front of my face. Now okay. Ready. Well, now with everything being online. I remember every single time, every single time I like got a new computer or had to like update or reinstall Windows or something. That's not working. That's you always had to there's like nothing on one anymore. Is it on R? Yeah. Yeah. Right. That okay. was even more of a delay than usual. Yeah. <laughs> what was the first sound? That's usually uh Okay, that one was better. The first one's usually more delayed. Free. 
What were you saying? Like when you? Oh, it was like every single time they were always like had to install had to install Office, then had to um, install like um, MSN Messenger and AOL Instant Messenger and Yahoo Messenger. <laughs> and, like, that's oh, why I would just yeah. get like Pigeon, where it would put all of them together. Oh, I didn't. I, only I didn't ever, know about that. I think I only Ooh. ever had AOL, like AIM. And MSN Messenger. I had like AIM and then one other thing. I think it meant when they just came out with like Facebook Messenger. Um, but I had a, I had a roommate that like he got a new computer and took like three weeks setting it up because he kept like wiping and reinstalling stuff. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Or at least it's, I don't know if it, it just seemed like for three weeks was him getting stuff set it up like the way he wanted it. Dude, measure twice, cut once. Yeah, I used. AIM I thought it was measure twice, cut three times. That's no, that's measure saying. three, measure twice, cut three times, cry once. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> All right. Three I hours, am ready. Three Are hours you? of sleep, two yep. one shower. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Thank you. I'm officially in the chat. Okay, there we go. Hey, all right. Collins in the chat. Hey, did you guys know Collins in the chat? I know Collins in the chat. Thanks. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Everybody, that's right. Everybody. Me, 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 me. You, 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 you. You ready to go, Colin? Two thumbs. All right. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> there is going to be an intro bit, just letting you know, even though not doing the sponsorship. Just letting you know. I'm here. I'm, I'm ready. Uh. I'm that was the intro. Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. And I got to watch out or that'll be We had the same thought. <laughs> it's just like I was. Uh, all right. Starting the show in three, two, one. This podcast is brought to you thanks to the people. <laughs> <laughs> False start. Outtakes galore. <laughs> this oh, is great. False start on the line. This is great. You want me to like erase that line? Because like you're looking at the screen. I wasn't so you, looking at you it. You weren't? I was not looking at uh, it. I, like I was looking at this. <laughs> ah, I, like your, your face was in that direction. I'm like, oh, is he trying to read that? No. Of course right. I have it. <clears throat> this podcast is brought to you by patrons such as Sean, Jay, John, and Roger. You could be awesome too and go to patreon.com slash boards and swords. Live from Swordplay Studios, it's time for Boards and Swords! Back in action! Woo! You might have overdid that. I'm glad Cindy can amuse herself with a little Pac-Man poster. Yeah, you took it away! <laughs> Where'd it go? Hmm? Did you take it, Philip? Yeah. It is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gone. <laughs> That's okay. So, so what we're going to do is we're going to give you an and it's gone. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Boards and Swords. This is a podcast where we're having fun talking about board games. I'm one of your hosts. My name is Chris Renshaw. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm that bald bearded guy, Philip. He's back. I'm back. I I'm am... not in black, though. <laughs> okay. I am Cindy. And I'm Colin. The Mix who, Master who are you calling? He's Mi the normal one tonight, guys. Mixmaster Colin over there. On the uh Well, we can't have any of that. Get out. Hang on, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start scratching. Wick, wick. Oh my word. Which what on the phase. Wait, which one is that hotkey to? What? what the scratch? The o? No, the is it the O for it's the opening? The o. Zero. The zero? Okay. Oh, Mixmaster Colin on the zeros and R's. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Renegade. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> I'm on fire tonight. Yeah. So, uh, you would think after being gone a month that we would have like news bits, like so much news, like but all this stuff happened. to talk about. No, there's been some stuff, but it was all boring <laughs> stuff. We took vacation at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> or like you know, if we want to talk about the downfall of Plat Hat Games, apparently, because mm. there was like three, three or four news stories about them canceling stuff. That's crazy. 
But instead, I thought it'd be f- uh, more entertaining, at least. Uh, the Origins Awards got announced. All right. Or the nominees, at least. And so I thought it'd be fun to talk about them a little bit and to go through and get kind of predictions, at least on some of these, because I know, like, most of this table's not going to care about collectible games or, or you know, RPGs. RPGs. Well, I'd say it's half and half for the RPGs. Right. That's not most, though. True. So anyways, on the category people care the most about, uh, board games, your nominees are Brass Birmingham, uh, Chronicles of Crime, Cryptid, Everdell, Gizmos, which might be talked about later, Pulsar 2849, Rising Sun, which is so weird when I think that Rising Sun came out last year. Yeah. (laughs) Because it just seemed like there was a long of time. I mean, I know it was fundraised the year before, but it just seems weird that 2018 was technically the year the Rising Sun came out. Yeah. Uh, Root and Space Base. Yeah. uh, The one that surprised me time-wise was Pulsar. Because I thought I remember, I, I think it there was probably some being demoed. On this, there were some on this list, like for instance, uh, Villainous. Villainous didn't come out last year. Villainous came out the year before because there was an expansion that came out last year. Ooh. That was this was year. Was it? I thought it just came it out just like came a, out oh, okay. couple months ago. Well, there were some on here because that was um, what was it? There was something else I saw that I was like, uh, what is the the, the term for? Uh, there was something I saw. Oh, um. I completely – oh, it was a family game. Where's the family games one? The Climbers. Like, why is the Climbers on there? Yeah, that that's an old game. It yeah. was reprinted. And, like, that Super Kitty Bug Slap. Isn't that an older game, too? I don't know. No idea about that one. I thought that was the one that you guys reviewed. Pulsar tw- – no. no. Pulsar 2849 no. has a 2017 date on it mm-hmm. on okay. BGG. So they just make up their own rules then, apparently. <laughs> Duh. Anyways. I don't know. There's a couple of – there's a couple of – obvious choices on here all rules are arbitrary so we're trying to decide which one we personally think yeah. will win for the board game category so how is this judged it's like pe- people vote on it people's choice yeah people's choice Villainous people's does have choice 2018 on it oh okay i think everdell is going to win for people's choice because that game is so stinking popular is it though like it is but it my money's on root. That's where oh I was right, I too. forgot root was on the <laughs> <Yeah>. list. <laughs> <laughs> My money's nope. on root. No, nope. root's have, on the list. I have not seen a person. You're right. Talk bad about root. I forgot. And root. it's gotten really popular. I forgot root was on the list. No, you're right. Root's on the list. Now space like or there's root's a couple of like Brass Birmingham's gotten a lot of buzz. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's like, more. All these games have gotten a lot of buzz, but a lot of, and there's a lot of like like Brass Birmingham was on a lot of the the yeah. BGG award lists. But uh, see, I think root has a wider fan base yes it's got it's more it's a broader fan base whereas brass is more niche yeah and so are some of these other games right well, I don't know. space Chron- space has Chronicles gotten a l- of crime though is really popular too sure that's another good one space space has also gotten a lot of it has. buzz yeah, that's too. one that we really like too only reason i would not say space space is that it came out like late in the year right no I bought it. No, it was before Dice Tower Con because we played really? it at Dice Tower Con. It, like we it, it seems us. like I've only really heard people talk about it, though, in the past. It's because they have an expansion that just came out. Shy Pluto. Oh. Yeah. Because it seemed like I was only hearing people talk about no, it since, like, we, fall last year. We bought it in June of last year, and it, okay. had, it had been out for a couple months, I think, at that point. So it was All right, so that theory's dead. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Yeah, my money my money would be on root. Yeah, I, I agree. If it was, yeah, if it was on gameplay strictly, yeah, uh, probably Root, but Root has the cuteness on top it of does. it, which is what Everdell which is what Everdell had for it. it. It was that cute animal theme, but then Root has that as well. So right, and Everdell's not bad. It's okay. just not as great as Root, right. I think. Yeah, and I the think mass, it's Root. mass appeal. So uh, going to card games, you've got things such as Anatomy Flux got nominated. I don't know why. Uh, the Choose Your Own Adventure House of Danger. That was the one that was in Target for a while. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dark Souls, the card game. What is that? It's a video game. It's a card game based on a video game. Well, it's a oh, card okay. game based on the board game of a video game. Okay. Uh, Get the MacGuffin, uh, Maiden's Quest, The Mind, and Villainous. I think this is a hands down. The, the mind. mind. Yeah. That Yeah, that's definitely. 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 I would be surprised I, if it didn't win. I feel I feel like Dark Souls the card game could be explained with that meme of uh 
the dude from Always Sunny with all the like the. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Charlie, 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 yeah. yeah. The the interesting thing about the Choose Your Own Adventure game is it had a lot of buzz and it had the nostalgia factor going for it, but a lot of people said that the gameplay itself fell flat. Yeah. So I would be surprised if that if that won because yeah this, it was this popular. But this this category off for card games felt like what was left after we put everything <laughs> else in the categories. It is yeah. like there's it the is like weird. the mind and villainous were kind of like like They're when so you look at the, when you look at the board game section like oh yeah these were a lot of the big heavy hitters from last year. When you yeah. look at the card games you got the mind and villainous those were like solid. Uh huh. But everything else is just kind of well okay the choose your own adventure one was kind of it was popular yeah it was popular but everything like Vane's quest to get the MacGuffin and Anatomy Flux. Yeah. yeah, that was just like what was left. What what can we put on here? Right. It's interesting I that uh, Looney Labs uh, does both an- Anatomy Flux and the uh, Get the MacGuffin. That doesn't what surprise is, me. I, what is Get the MacGuffin? It's, it's or, Maid- or Maiden's Quest. I've never heard of either. I've of heard of Maiden's Quest. I don't know the exact gameplay behind Get Ma- Get the MacGuffin, but there's like a card that's kept hidden or something that you're trying oh. to make sure is in your possession at the end of the game. I do know what that is. Uh, Hold okay. on, does everybody it, know what a MacGuffin is? Because I joked about it for a while, and then I had Ashley ask me, like, wait, what is that? I forget. I looked I it up at one point. I thought this was, like, a common thing. Mm. The, get, uh, the MacGuffin's like a plot device. That's right. Yeah. Oh. It's, like, the thing that... It's uh, Pulp Fiction. It's the briefcase. Yeah. Uh, Avengers, it's the cube. It's the one... It's the, the magical thing, or, you know, just the... the thing of importance, basically, that solves all your problems. Mm. Uh, according to Giggle... A MacGuffin is an object or device in a movie or a book that serves merely as a trigger for the plot. Isn't that what I said by plot device? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But, uh, mm-hmm. Oh, my word. I got I to do, my, I gotta do my, my line here. Thank you, Leroy. Which is why I think You're it's welcome. funny that the, the, the AMC that we have, the, the one that they now have a bar in it, and it's called MacGuffins. Ah. I think that's funny. And nobody ever got the joke when I wouldn't point it out. <laughs> I didn't know there was a name for it. Yeah. I had no idea. It's been so long since I've been to that theater. So, There's anyways, there now. <laughs> yeah, I actually prefer it because I prefer the AMC reward system. Than and there's really only one way in, instead of the two ways in. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, so next is collectible games. Yawn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I the only thing so there was there was one thing I wanted to point out. So obviously, like my votes for for keyboard. Yeah. But there is a couple of things. A Magic has got a Dominaria booster thing on there. That's potential for a winner just because of the amount of people that play Magic. Yeah. Um, the other thing I noticed is that whereas everybody else was t- like boot this boot because they're targeting specific products like basically a UPC is what they're th- like. It's it's this booster, that booster. They're not like saying this set. Mm-hmm. They're giving like a, a UPC thing. Um mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, like for Pokemon Booster, Star Wars Destiny Booster, the weird one I saw was the Warhammer Age of Sigmar Champions, the trading card game, the one where you can scan in your cards. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was the Death Campaign deck, which is like the starter, one of the one of the four starters they came out with. Hmm. I thought that was weird. Yeah, that would be weird, yeah. Like it wasn't the booster pack or anything. It was like the starting deck. Huh. I should just act like I know what I'm talking about and just chime in. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think I do? Starter decks are wherever everyone starts, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that isn't that a fact of life? Okay, John. You got to start at the beginning and work your way to the end. You got to John Madden. Like, I was going to draw some X, draw some X's and you know <laughs> this guy comes over here. He's out in no man's land. You start over here, all right? This is your skill level. Then you get the starter pack. Of, bam! You're over here. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, uh, get you interested again. Family games. Family games. We got the climbers. I'm I'm gonna try and say is it a uh, Akinda shuffle? Echid- Close. Echid- yeah. Echidna. No. Echid- Echidna. 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 Thanks. <laughs> the Mansky caper. Although when I read Mansky. it, it was the Man Sky caper. The Man Sky caper. Whatever. Pantone the game. Spy Club. Strawberry Ninja. That's the one I wanted to back on Kickstarter. A Super years Kitty ago. Bug Slap. Uh, the T Dragon Society card game. When I Dream. That's another one that was a 2017 mm. release. Yeah. Because that, that was, was into 2017, wasn't it? No, it was Gen Con. Uh, I think it was, they were demoing it. I, s- I demoed it at Gen Con 2017, but I don't think it went into release until Essen. Mm. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, I don't know enough about these games, although based on Buzz, I would go towards Spy Club. Yeah. 
So I have played the Climbers, Spy Club, Pantone. Have I played T Dragon Society? Have yep. I played One Eye Dream? Yeah, that's the blindfold one. Yeah. We did we played the yeah, we played Dice, Dice Dark Con. That was fun. I that played When I Dream game. and Pantone. That's it. So <laughs> I think out of all of the ones that I've played, I would say I absolutely love Spy Club. So I'm going to say that that c- is the winner. But I could be wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I what what do you, what do you What's Pantone? Why does that seem familiar? Pantone is the it. color it's the game spectrum. With the cards, of the paint, paint colors. swatch clar- cards and you're trying to get people to guess okay. words. Well, cuz Pantone is like cards. uh It's the color it's the Pantone it's the color, color wheel. Company. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. It's gotcha. they come up with like the color mm. of the year. I think the the color company that was the one that Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving See on the to the, the rest of the stuff that nobody cares about, <laughs> at least on that side of the table. Yeah, I'll just sit back. Uh, miniatures games, you got Fallout, Kill Team, Ooh, Fallout. Kings of War, Necromunda, A Song of Ice and Fire, and Star Wars Legion. I want it to be Star Wars Legion, but I think I'm going to have to guess Kill Team oh. because it's the Games Workshop. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking if it's, uh, if it's Legion, then they'll make even more stuff. What? That's going to happen either way. What am I saying? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Uh, RPG wise, you got Dust City Outlaws, uh, Flash Gordon. Ooh, uh, for, ah! I didn't even know there was. Th- uh, I th- didn't uh, either. Uh, yes. Forbidden, not, Forbidden Lands, Invisible Sun, the Midgard World Book, Mutants and Masterminds Basic Heroes Handbook, which is another one I think I released a while back. Uh, Numenera Destiny and Discovery Core Book Deluxe Slipcase, uh, Star Wars Adventures Star or Star Trek. Trek. I did it again. <laughs> this is like the second time I've done that. <laughs> Star Trek Adventures. Down. Uprising, the dystopian universe, and Vampire the Masquerade. This I, one's hard. That one is. I've heard really. stuff about the vampire one. This, well, there's been a lot of bad stuff oh, yeah. about the vampire Hey, these are in alphabetical order. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Wait, they all are. Yeah. <laughs> he just pasted the information and then deleted it. They all do them alphabetical. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. But, uh, yeah, there's not like a clear favorite in this. They're mm. all very... Um, there's not like a uh, like like with the collectibles. There's not a magic or a games workshop one. Mm-hmm. This one could be any. Th- it could be like Dust of the Outlaws, Flash Gordon, Forbidden uh, Forbidden Lands, Midgar World Book, Mutants and Masterminds, and Uprising. I would rule most of the. I would rule those out. Vampire I'd probably rule out mainly because it had a very. It, the release was not handled very well. Mm. I don't um, know. My money's on Flash Gordon. That guy can do anything. <laughs> he rides a wave runner, ra- wave runner in space. Like, if I went on product itself, I would lean probably towards Numenera Destiny and Discovery, the core book slipcase, because that's a beautiful product. Um, but I'd probably put my money on the Star Trek Adventure starter set, because mm. that's got the... the Star Trek name it, on it's it. Got, it's got the IP recognition. Yeah. You mean it's got the Star Wars name on it. Yes, that too. <laughs> According <laughs> to you, yeah. Uh, and then RPG Supplement, uh, Aldis, City of the Blue Rose, uh, Call of Cthulhu, Mask of Nila, <laughs> uh, Conan, Conan, Book of yeah. Skellos, Creature Codex, 5th Edition, Dungeons and Dragons, Mordekainen's Tomb of Foes, uh, Legend of the Five Rings, Emerald Empire, Star Trek Adventures, The Command Division, Starfinder, Pact Worlds. This is basically everybody, everybody and their 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 best supplement. Which is weird because I don't know if I would have put Mordekainen's as Home the best supp- yeah. as the best supplement. Um, well, who would you pick for a D and D supplement? Uh, did Z- no? I guess Xanathar's came out in 2017. Yeah, because otherwise it would have been that. I would have totally. Pick- I, you know what? I think it won last year. So well, maybe it is. Uh, D&D would probably be, I mean, it's D&D. They usually end up winning this category. But L5R is a really good book. Yeah. Anyways. So that's 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 your dose of news this time. Cool. <laughs> Those are the nominees. Chris, you're making me sick over here. Why? <laughs> he's touching everything that he's pointing out in the... Touching that's the not even moving now. You were going too fast. That was like, it's glitching. Anyways, <laughs> making more work for me. So, <laughs> I've been talking. Hey, tell me about Newton. Newton? Yeah. Newton was a scientist. You know that? No, I didn't. He had some. It's also laws. a f- measurement of uh, force. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. He uh, he 
He was a very smart guy. So we have Newton the game here. Uh, that is from Simon and Cranio Creations. Which means I'm probably going to hate it. <laughs> yep, yep. So turn it around so you can see all the hatred it's you can Simone spew out of it. Simone So much beige. <laughs> right? It, it, this is a lot of beige in this <laughs> one. Where? Yeah. Are there any minis in this Simon game? No. no. Get this that thing the, out of here. This is the or not. The, the or not. Oh, that's yeah. the or not yeah. portion? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So this... I normally erase that from my boxes. This is a Euro <laughs> game, and like you are similar to a lot of other Simone Luciani games, it, m doing different things, trying to get points. And in this one, there is a map you're trying to move around. Uh, it's like a map of Europe. There is a technology track. You like have students moving on uh, yeah. through the through the universities. It seems almost like they're doing, even though you're visiting universities in Europe on the map. Don't know. Don't know about that story wise. Then you have your in your player board. Yeah, you have your player board. You're building up your library of books, and just different ways to get points in the game. What you are doing on your turn though is simply you have a hand of cards. You lay down a card, and the symbol that you lay down, you see how many of that symbol are showing on your board, and you get to do it that mu that much power to that action. And you do that, like, so if I lay down the gear symbol, I can, I think that that was the student moving through the school system. Yeah. And so if I have two of that, I can move it two spaces. And if it's, like, the compass, that's moving on the map. So you can move, like, you know, two, three spaces on the map. And where you stop, you can get special bonuses, drop off your cubes, so you clear off cubes off your player board, you get points that way. It's a little bit point salad -y, just mm -hmm. a different ways of getting points. You sound so excited talking about this game. <laughs> that I I went into this, I was so excited. Simone Luciani, that, that's like a name that... We love his I mean, name. this is basically the people behind Lorenzo, right? Uh, well, Nestor no. Man, uh You covered up the other Sorry. name. Nestor uh, Man Mangone. Mangone. Uh, is not in any other games. Oh, okay. This is like his first one in the realm but of Simone Luciani. But Simone Luciani. Luciani has a lot of stuff, and we love his games. Like, we do. And I, yeah, I, I was anticipating this greatly just because it's Clemens Franz art and Simone Luciani, and it just looked like, a game hey, this is like, a game that's yeah. up my alley. And while it did not, uh, I did not, I wasn't disappointed necessarily in the game, but I was. Okay. Does that make sense? Like, uh, it wasn't as great as I thought it was going to be. It was yeah. a good game. I, I like the whole hand management. Like, what card am I going to put down? Uh, sw something I didn't mention. There's five, six rounds. At the end of each round, all the cards that you put down, you, you pull them back up into your hand except one. One goes away. It tucks under your board. You have the symbol permanently, but you can't take the action off that card anymore. Okay. You don't get the the residual benefit. And so there is that decision. You, okay, what do I want to get rid of? So uh, you can acquire more cards, so you can make sure like you, you can have still have that ability. But mm -hmm. uh, I, don't, I don't know quite what didn't resonate with me, though. Now, so, something I've heard when hearing other people talk about mm -hmm. this is that their first play was kind of mixed. But it seemed like it was one of those games that I've just from people I've heard that the more they played it, the more they liked it. Uh, that may be the case. I did like it better uh, in the, the later plays that we had. Yeah, I, I agree about that. To me, this game, it felt like there was so many things to do and there wasn't enough time to do it all. And you hear I, that a lot in games, and yeah. usually it's like a, a good thing. It's like I can't do everything I want, and I I love that. It's the tension is there. But for this, but with this one, I feel like it kind of almost penalizes you if you don't excel in certain tracks. Yeah, it, it feels it like feels like you're crawling a yeah. little bit on some of the tracks. Yeah, like there's this one track. It's uh, like how you get money in the game. Yeah, is that the track. money track. I I don't remember what it's called now. Why am I blowing? Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. But that one, I like the first game. I like blasted up that track, and then our, you know, the next couple games, I just kind of fell back. I'm like, well, I I just wasn't able to do it, and it was weird. Yeah, a lot of times when uh, you can't do all that you want, you still like you have those like combos at the end of the game. It's but like this, boom, I don't feel boom, like boom. you have that. It yeah, it's it's kind of isolated, yeah. not really combo making. 
I mean, there there is combos. I'm not going to say there isn't, but right. it's just not super amazing combos. No, not like some of his other games. Like mm-hmm. like Voyages Marco Polo. Oh my gosh, that or game. Council of Four even. Yeah, that like, was that's combo tastic. That, that's that's built. That's a game built on combos. Yeah. But yeah, this one doesn't have. It just that. doesn't have that X factor to keep it off the shelf. Yeah, it's. Uh, this may. You know, uh, rewind five seconds. Uh, what I've realized is not necessarily just Simone Luciani that I am interested in the game. It's the other designers that he's paired with, like Virginio Gigli. I think he was the one that was with uh, Lorenzo and uh, Grand Austria Hotel. And then Daniel Tassini. Yeah, Tassini. Daniel Tassini. The those those names are great names. Uh, in addition to Simone Luciani, and I think I have a reason to look a little closer before just jumping at his name okay yeah i get that so i gotta change how i speak on instagram from now on about simone luciani (laughs) 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 all right well what do we want to talk about another simon game yeah oh yeah yeah yeah. i have gizmos no minis in that either no mini. yes but there's like tactile (laughs) stuff Lots of tactile stuff. You can touch stuff in this game. Yeah. There's Gizmos. potions in this. In are there any? Uh, are there any mogwais in this? What? Oh no. No, no mogwais. <laughs> okay. Just gremlins. Just gremlins. I figure I should probably do this so Philip can at least look at the. Uh, hey, pictures. Words. So <laughs> in Gizmos, it, Gizmos. It's in very, math. It's it's a it's a light engine building game, very similar to like Century Spice Road or Splendor and that kind of feel where you're just doing one of a couple of actions and trying to build a machine going. Mm -hmm. But literally, in this case, because you're trying to build different gizmos that um, are these little cards, and there's this marble track that's filled. There's a container filled with marbles, kind of like potion explosions, except for instead of having, like, five tracks, there's one. And uh, And you're not trying to combo. On the marbles... Not necessarily. Yeah. There is combos in the sense that when you build these gizmos, it may be like, when I pull a yellow ball, I get to also grab another kind of ball. Yeah. Or when I pull a random ball, I also get to get a free yellow ball. Mm-hmm. Or it's yeah. So there are there is combo making in that sense. Right. Um, yeah, it's just not the explosion from Potion correct. Explosion. Correct. Yeah. It's not that match it's three not the kind candy of. Crush. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, and 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 you know you got your lo- your easy gizmos to build, and then the more complicated, and then the game ends when you build a certain amount of either the top row or total amounts. Yeah. And so I just you're going round and around. Each person's either building a card, grabbing a card, or grabbing the components that they need to build one of their cards. Mm-hmm. So, um, but this has definitely got all the steam on polish on it as far as the the artwork and the. Components. I don't know why I was spacing there on mm-hmm. components, but you guys, we, I got you guys to play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had played it originally at Dice Tower Con because right. I was running the hot games tables, and so, uh, but then I got to play it with, uh, with you too. I really enjoy this game. Uh, this is this is what should be in our collection versus Century Spice Road or Splendor. Oh like, yeah. This is this is what should be there. Yeah. It's Engine Builder, the engine building game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so, like it, too. So it, th- I've, I've kind of gone up and down with this because I demoed it at the Simon Expo. Mm-hmm. I had one of the Simon guys show me it, and I was like, this is great. And then I got it, and I was like, this is great. <laughs> and then I've played it a couple of times since, and I'm like, it's pretty good. And I've realized, because I've been thinking about it a lot, like, this is a good game. Mm. This is an amazing game. I don't know if I need to have it in my collection, though. Mm, okay. Like, I would never turn down playing this game. But I don't think I would ever myself pull it off the shelf. Mm. And I don't know. That's not to say anything about Gizmos. I think it's more to say about the type of game it is. I got gotcha. you. And the reason I said that is I got back to thinking, like, A, I haven't played Century Spice Road in, like, over a year. Mm. Um, I play Splendor more on the app now than anything and when when i play it it's with a specific set of people right that i know are more interested in that type of game than anything like i play splendor with my family because they love splendor you know so that's like that's when i play splendor Mm -hmm. so they the they would be great to play gizmos with but it's not like when i go to game night i'm not going to be grabbing gizmos I get that. So that's nothing to say at the game. This is if you like Splendor, like you said, if you like those style of games, 
you should get this game. Mm-hmm. For me, though, in fact, I'll probably send this copy home with you then, oh. since you seem to be have the more interested in it. Um, it's one that, like I said, I never turn down a play. I'm just not going to pull it off the shelf versus something else. Right. Okay. Yeah, people were. I've seen people talking online about the Marvel dispenser seems unnecessary, but it actually does a lot of good for the game because. Oh yeah. It, like Zulkin, it the, you know the game with the gears. It has, people are like, the gears really aren't necessary. They just take care of upkeep. Right. But it's a lot of upkeep that you don't have to do. Right. Like this, like if you didn't have the slot with the marbles, you'd have to be like, I don't know, pulling randomly from a bag. Until and like, you get to a blue ball or something. Yeah. Or, or you know, yeah, having everything set up and line them up. And it's just, you don't have to worry about that. And you have that ready to grab randomly too. Right. Now you could make a case that the dispenser is probably bigger than it needs to be. Oh yeah, because there's, there's a bunch of extra space. I mean, there. you got that. You, I think it's cry- trying to create that blind spot, really. Sure. Yeah, I get that. But even still, it's a little excessive. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's still not like I. I think this game is in the. I should probably look it up. I want to say it's like in the fifty dollar oh, MSRP well range. It's the components. It's not bad. Well, it's not bad when you, especially like I think Splendor is a forty dollar game. Yeah, and this one's a much better game component wise what's I the um or i personally think what's the oh it's a 30 dollar oh, msrp $30 game. game well then that's amazing gizmos, yes. is? gizmos this is a 30 dollar msrp wow. that's amazing yeah that means you'll probably find it for like at least uh, probably 25 on amazon or something yeah like it that. says it's out of stock right now cool stuff but okay what what was the um the the crazy crazy engine building game with all the cards are you talking about terraforming mars no 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 the uh the one where it was actually like oh the car oh oh yeah. steampunk rally steampunk rally yes ah okay yes. I still need to play that that was just an outlandish <laughs> but I like that because there was a bunch of dice rolling yes there was bu- I mean it was a bunch of dice rolling it also had just they they pulled so many different I mean because it all started out with like a car yeah and I mean they they pulled like didn't they have the DeLorean in there it was like not a, that when was we, a cr- that was not a promo. when we played, but I got it as a promo. Yeah, I remember like, you bought it. I, got the at, like, I didn't buy it. They were just like, I like your game. They're like, cool. Here's the pro- like, I like your game. Can I get the the? Can I buy the promo? Like, no, you can just have it. <laughs> ah, that's cool. Because they were selling it with the game, and I was like, well, I want the promo, but I already have the game. Can mm. I just like buy the promo? And they're like, oh no, here you go. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they, but they like the the eclectiveness. Mm. Would that work? Yeah. No. Sure. Just the, the randomness of all the starting vehicles you can have on there. Yeah. And then ah. you start like building out and like you have a plane on top of a and then tank treads <laughs> and then, <laughs> <laughs> helicopter. Yeah. <clears throat> I yeah. But um I I have not played Gizmos. Right. Yeah. If someone was like, Hey, we're playing Gizmos, I'm like, Cool, let me put some pants on, I'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, so that's right it like it's not going in my collection, but that's not because it's a bad game. It's a good game for what it does, especially if you're looking for another kind of Splendor. You've burned out of Splendor and Century, mm-hmm. then you're going to want to check out Gizmos, because I think this is probably my favorite of the three games. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that, I too. I agree. In fact, the reason I thought that that, that gave me all these different thoughts <laughs> is I got to thinking about how I felt when I played Eastern Wonders, where I was just like, I don't see a need to buy this. <laughs> mm. <laughs> like, I played it, and I was like, that was okay. <laughs> I liked Eastern Wonders more than uh, than Spice Road. I liked bits of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I felt like it was a little bit more of that, okay, you're working towards something right. rather than quick grabs. Like there were, there were aspects I liked about it, but the parts I liked took away from what I liked about Century Spice Road mm. and that I liked that Century Spice Road was just a quick, quick and easy game to play, mm-hmm. whereas... Eastern Wonders was more complex, and I liked some of those bits where you there were different ways to win, but that was also the reasons I liked the other game better. So, <laughs> yeah, hmm. but yeah, so there's Gizmos from Simon. That was a very long and complicated <laughs> review. <laughs> well, good for you. Yeah, well, let's go to a thing we already know you're gonna like. Uh, uh, ticket, ticket to, to ride. ride. Okay, so we got the Ticket to Ride Map Pack Six, which is France. And Old West. Um, 
Go Did figure, we played the Old West first. No. <laughs> Did you hey. buy a special box and you have all of your maps in Yeah, it? yeah. We so do. we can talk about that, too. Yeah, we... Uh, if you we notice, it's the same box as what's behind you. Yeah, we got one of the Hobby Lobby yeah, sure artist supply cases, uh, and we put all of the map, map packs, packs in it. All the, ba all the, like, the standalone Ticket to Ride games are still in their original boxes, but all the map packs and ex cards and everything for them are in here. Okay, so... I'm going to start with Old West because that's the one we played first. And okay. You know, Western. So the Old West side, it's just the Western United States is what it is. And then um, what makes this one different is <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> thank you. So in at the beginning of the game, after you've like selected your tickets, everybody has um, train stations. And you place a train station on the board somewhere. It doesn't matter where. It doesn't even have to be in one of your cities if you don't want it to be. But somewhere in the board. And you have to start building from that station. And then throughout the game, you can only build adjacent to current routes you've already placed on the board. And throughout the game, at, after you've placed a route, if you want, you can also pay two, two identical color train tickets to build a new station. The cool thing about the stations is... If an opponent builds a route into one of your stations, they don't get points you do for that route. Mm -hmm. So it's it's kind of exciting. And if multiple people have train stations and you've built your trains in between their two stations, both those people get points and you don't. But if you have a station there, you get points and the other person does too. Similarly, if you have two stations on either end of the route, you'll get double the points. Okay. Yes. Mm. One of in one of our games we played, I there's one in this game. There are a couple of places. No, there's only one. There's one route that's seven trains instead of just six, and so it's worth eighteen points. And somebody had gone. It was it's into Los Angeles, and somebody went into Los Angeles and didn't claim a station. And then I built into Los Angeles, and I'm like eighteen points. I'm like I should have built a station. Mm. They were so mad at themselves. Uh, it was great. Anyway. Um, and then one other little thing is I, there's a, a mini expansion that came out years ago called Alvin and Dexter, and it was like one's an alien, and one's a dinosaur. And in this version, it incorporates Alvin again. Um, and starts he starts in Roswell, in Roswell New Mexico, mm. and it, it's kind of like the whole end game bonus where if you if you have control of Alvin at the end of the game, you get ten point bonus. But however, during the game, if you enter if you build trains routes into Roswell, you get to collect Alvin. If you're the first person that is, you get to collect Alvin. Then you get 10 points. You place him in one of your train stations on the board. And then if someone else builds into your train station, they take Alvin and get 10 points and put him in their station. And it's kind of like a cat and mouse game with mm -hmm. Alvin. And every time you collect him, you get 10 points plus the 10 bonus at the end of the game. If you still hold, if you have him yeah our four player game i was trying to do some diplomacy i say hey you're you're right there you should uh you know go and get get alvin because like i wasn't getting up near that station and mm -hmm. i was like yeah take him so i can take him from you because <laughs> <laughs> he only had one station on the board and i was and right was next, next to, to it Colin. hey yeah. hey look it's got carson city on it it does have it carson does have city carson city i was, mm -hmm. yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah hey so you. that's the so that's the gist about the old west <clears throat> and then the well, do you want to talk about both of them together, or do you want to talk about the Old West side? Um, do you want to talk about the Old West side? No, I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm saying, do you want? Are you going to talk about yeah, we the could, whole uh, of map we, pack? We can talk you? about each individual as well. Yeah, okay. Uh, but uh, the Old West map is probably my favorite of the two. Okay. Yes. And but I like it better not at two. Yeah, players. I want to try it. We didn't try it at three players. Three uh -huh. players might be good too, because you still can't use the double or triple routes. But right. But it's filling mm -hmm. up more of the board. Uh, but yeah, we played it a a couple times. Two player, one four player game. The four player game was much better, because uh, I mean, two player is not bad. In both of our two player games, though, we uh we, we didn't. We're so far apart. Yeah, it's it's very it's it's, it's a, a map made map. for six players. It's yeah. it's a mm -hmm. it's the first actual six player map. Yeah, they actually give you an extra set of. Um, trains like it's a mm -hmm. white color now. No, oh. and um, to add on to your original five because yeah, it goes up to six. But yeah, Both we sides we barely do. ran into each other on the in our old two West player map. games. Yeah, and neither one of us took Alvin. I I was close to taking him 
in yeah. one of our games, but it di- he didn't get touched. Yeah. In the four player game, it changed hands a few times. It did, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a it's a good map. I like it, but he I agree with him. It's definitely better at more than two. Yeah, which is sad because we're usually two player <laughs> gamers. But because they can't find t- any other than two people that will play a Western <laughs> game. Nonsense. We can That's find people true. that like Ticket to Ride. Though. <laughs> That's not true. And it doesn't have a Western feel to the game, so. It yeah. just has a ticket to ride. Well, I feel like you two aren't trying hard enough. To <laughs> <have a Western laughs> oh my gosh! Whatever. I put on my wait, cowboy wait. hat and my boots. Right? Hold on. How, how do we add poker to this game? <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> oh, <There> whatever. <laughs> we do add. We do listen to Western music. Hey, that'd be a great it. mechanic, though. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so the France side <laughs> of the map, the France one is really different. And I know you've played this, right? Yeah, Chris? I was gonna say I have played the France. Oh, you okay. played it digitally. I played it digitally mm-hmm. because right. it, it was a, it was an exclusive for a while on the uh, maybe exclusive per the app um, when you did the PlayLink version that I demoed. Okay. Mm-hmm. The the one that you put up on the PS4, and then everyone controls via their phones. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, they said it was like a exclusive on there. Okay. I think they meant digitally, but anyways. All right. So anyway, the the France map is way different because the only routes that are actually like colored and usable at the beginning of the game are the one train routes and the six train routes. The six trains are always all gray and the one are, you know, just the random colors, whatever. Everything else you have to build routes throughout the game to make them whatever colors you want them to be. And so you do that by when you're collecting cards, you know, when you're collecting train cards to build up your hand to lay down routes, you have you have to place a colored route on the board. And there's twos, threes, fours and fives, obviously, since there's no since ones and sixes are already done for you. And you you have to place something like there's no way around it. I keep forgetting. It's really bad. (laughs) But um, you only forgot once in our last game. I did only forget once. That's true. But the interesting thing is it makes it – you don't want to necessarily place the routes where you are trying to go until you're ready to claim them almost. Right, that's what I found. Because, I mean, you can, but it you run the risk then of your opponent now knowing, okay, they're definitely going there if that's the only routes that you start populating mm-hmm. with these tracks. And so that that's interesting to me, but uh, the ol- that's really the only difference about this one. The you have the globe trotter bonus, which is most tickets. You have the longest route bonus, um, and it's standard. S- it's like in the this Europe though. map in ter- in terms of like you're trying to. G- there's specific countries on the board with, and then there's all the France cities and stuff you're trying to get to. But well, that's like Switzerland. Switzerland does that. Europe has all the countries. Oh, you're right. Europe has. You're right. No, yeah, no. Switzerland's the one where you trade. Um, it's in fact with with I think it's I think Germany does it too, where it, it might. The, the routes don't go to a specific. So if they, they go off go the, the board, they just say go to the country. And yeah. the UK does it And you it can as go well to a France. like one of three. And no, yeah, York. as long as you go, that was a little weird, especially in the app. Because it lights up all the ones for that. Like I'm used to, like it lights up green all the all the places oh. you have to connect, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's like ah, and then you're like oh, I just need to do to one of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But something that's interesting, you can see right oh, here. Oh yes, I forgot. There to are tracks this. that cross over each other. Once one of those has been built, like you put, you deem its color, uh, whatever. You choose its color. Uh, yeah. The other cannot be built on. Okay, so I, was, I was looking at that. Yeah, you can yeah. lock something out. Yeah, which screwed us up. E- we each screwed each other over last time we played this by doing that. Yeah, there's a few different spots. Like, there, there's a, a big spot right oh there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like four intersecting time. places. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting that that's an option. <laughs> so what did you think of this one? What did I think about this one? I'll, I'll, I, I could start while you're thinking about sure. it. I yeah. didn't like it. To me, it was just like this defeats the point of Ticket to Ride for me because I Ticket to Ride is kind of like a light casual, and this is adding in like an extra layer of complexity that like if I want that in the game, I'll play something else other than Ticket to Ride. Mm. Mm. Now, granted, again, everything mine's biased because I'm playing on the app, right. right? But and it was just it was just an extra thing I was having to like an extra layer of thinking I'm having to do 
other than my planning and for it did like there's not like a good reason it's just there it's like when you're talking about little rules in mm-hmm. games you don't like yeah it's like that like there's not really a point to this other than and like you get into the things we're talking like like where do i go because if i go this way it's gonna make it obvious i want to go that way but mm-hmm. i don't want to like i just put, ran- i just randomly put things down uh, yeah and then at that point it's like if i'm just randomly putting stuff down why am i doing this mm-hmm. yeah i why don't I, I just don't play know. any other ticket to ride map so i think it's kind of cool because when Sometimes when you're playing the real game, you're just not getting the cards that you absolutely need. Right. In this version, you you see a bunch of reds. You're like, okay, I need to have five of something. I'll collect all a bunch of these reds and then lay a five red down in that spot, and boom, I'm good to go. So it's almost like you can control your own destiny instead of, like, I have to have pink to go here, and I'm not getting any pink. Oh, my gosh, this is terrible. I'm going to not complete this ticket. Whereas, you, like I said, you have that control over a little bit anyway, unless your opponents then swoop in and I think it has to deal with the fact down. that like I'm not a Ticket to Ride huge fan. So yeah. when I play Ticket to Ride, I want, you want, the, simple I want the simple Ticket to Ride. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're a Ticket to Ride fan and you play it a lot and you want something different, then mm-hmm. I guess – which is reason why I know you hate this idea. The old west map might work for you because it's mostly, it mostly just tickets, tickets to ride, ride. and it, it plays into the style that a lot of people do anyway. They just build out for in, right. a, in a straight line. But see, the funny thing is that's I thought I would enjoy that about the old west, and I don't mm. because it limits you. Like because you almost don't want to have tickets that don't like intersect with each other because. In a normal ticket to ride, you could get tickets that go all over the board. Like, you have one that goes north and one that goes south and one that's over here in the east or whatever. Mm -hmm. But with the old west map, if you do that, you're going to kind of screw yourself up because you can't necessarily get all of your trains connected like that. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of frustrating in that aspect. But, I I mean, I do enjoy the old west map. Uh, So on the old west map, you said if you had... Where the train stations? The train stations, yes. The uh-huh. train stations. Um, you said if you could have a route at either end and get double the points. Yes. Could that routes are can be multiple cities? No, no, no. The, when she's the, talking about the, the route, two. so like if I put a, a she's talking a, about the that's a route. Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's a route. And well, because you also it gets ooh. confusing because there's also ooh. the tickets which yeah. are multiple. That's the city to city. Yeah. Well, because there was also like a longest route award. Isn't that just like a six tile or is that a... No, it, that's talking about your connected cities. Okay. Pretty much. Okay. So yeah. that they was... They use the word route for too much. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's really the only other place that they use it. I guess that's it. true. She's, they're talking about when you claim a segment. Yes, a segment. Would be a better... Okay. There you go. Mm-hmm. Segment. See that? Yeah, okay. So... Thanks, Chris. If you pop one right there and then pop one right there and then build in the middle, you get... All right. Correct. Segment. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you couldn't do it here because... Yeah, you just can't, but... <laughs> But in general, uh, yes, you have the correct idea. Okay. I think, uh, deviating from this, I think I found Germany to be one of my favorites to play. The nice New Germany, Germany or Marklin? It's probably regular. Regular, because okay. they don't have Marklin in the app. Okay. I haven't played Germany. And I don't think we've played with a lot of the extra, because we don't have the passengers. Yes. Yeah. Right, that's I part of Marklin. I think that's Marklin, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Well, Germany's, Germany's just a nice place in general. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyways, though, but w- final thoughts on overall. It's a good map. Uh, map, map pack. pack. Mm-hmm. I The Old West is good, but I, I would say this is one to get if you're going to have more than just two players playing. Yes. So For both sides? Probably. Yeah. Uh, I, we have not played France at more than two. I um, mean, it works better it works. at two than the Old West did. Yes. But, but I still, still feel like it would be there'd be more tension with more players for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, both sides you only use forty trains. Oh, that was that was another. Oh thought yeah, I had. the forty. The trains. France side, like I, I don't see why you have to just have forty trains. Even I mean, especially at two, because there's so much on the map. It's, it's like it's a wide maybe map. it's just a length of time type thing, just like limiting how long the game is. But I really yeah. feel at two, it you can throw those extra five trains in there. Yeah. Um. I would say if you if you like Ticket to Ride, if you love Ticket to Ride and you have the you have other map packs and you enjoy them, 
this definitely adds a good variety and I definitely would suggest picking it up. Um, if you are like Chris and you're like, I like Ticket to Ride for the simple, easy, quick game that it is, you don't need this. It's not f it's not necessarily for you. If you're curious, find somebody that has it, try it, and if you love it, hey, then get it. But this is definitely it's it's definitely one of the more advanced, I'll say, of the map packs. The France side specifically. Yeah, I mean the old west is is much more simple, yes. But uh, yeah, if you But it's also very different. Mm -hmm. It's a different ticket to ride experience from yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the definitely the France is a much more advanced variant of Ticket to Ride. Yeah, another one would so be the UK, which also had the Pennsylvania side. Which to was that. more simple. Yeah, it, it was really simple. I think that they're doing it like that on purpose. I yeah. The sides appeal to different. <laughs> I'm types just of I'm just getting the 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 they complete other end of the spectrum of flipping these maps over. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have you know oh Pim and Proper Lunt, and then we're gonna have Pennsylvania. What? Oh. Yeah, what it it seems like they're doing like a U.S. and a European <laughs> on opposite sides. Yeah, I think oh that's yeah. the trend. Well, they're they've only they had two of them that have been like that. They're just so hitting much. hitting spitballs at like a giant <laughs> world map. <laughs> Bam! All right, we hit France. Bam! All right, we hit. Uh, I mean, we hit Nevada. Old West. All right, there we go. <laughs> 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 Love it. But yeah, so I mean, great great game. I'm glad that we have it because it definitely is. I mean, I'm a ticket to ride completionist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'm not disappointed. No. And I'm not disappointed at all that it's in my collection. Well, what about rails and sales, though? Whatever, that doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> Burn it. Um. Yeah. So yeah, ticket to ride. So now, when map you say pack six, when you say map pack, that is. It's not a base game. It's that is just, what I'm thinking. It's, it's like just, a map pack. It's a map mm -hmm. with tickets and maybe a little extra pieces. You cannot okay. play the game by itself. Yes. With you just have to have a base game. Okay. All right. Because like you it's an expansion the for the game. It's a, yeah. okay. It right. is an expansion. They just call them map packs. Right. Well, I mean, same in like multiplayer online games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's DLC. It's DLC. That's <laughs> what it is. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Downloadable, Downloadable content. content. Oh. Anyways, so uh, I got sent in the mail this game from Brain Games called Orc Olympics. And I was like, oh, that's it's got cutesy kind of artwork on it. And it kind of sat on the shelf for a while. So I was like, I really should get that played. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's a game. It's a game? It's a game. It's a game. All right. Does this break the Brain Games trend? No, because I kind of see what they're going for. Mm -hmm. Like, this was not... So it does break the trend in that a lot of brain games are like they're designed around that kids will enjoy, but also adults will enjoy. Mm. This is a game that kids will enjoy and the adults might have to grit and bear through. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's basically a drafting game. You, you've got a bunch of orc Olympians that are of different races and you're trying to like draft specific ones and your each specific races have better stats than others. Mm. And so you get to you have different challenges and one might be an agility challenge. And you're trying to see who can throw the best person down for agility. And you kind of go around until everyone, it's kind of like a pressure luck because you could put your person down and if it gets back to you, you could put another person down, but everyone you put down, you can't play on somewhere else. Mm. So are you using up somebody that you might need somewhere else? So it's a really simple, it is also really simple to play. It, you can learn in like five minutes. Yeah. Um, we played it once and like that's a game I don't need to play again. Yeah. Um, but I will say, if you've got kids, this is a really, really easy drafting game. Yeah. So if you like drafting games and you've got like Seven Wonders, like if you're a big Seven Wonders fan and you've got kids and you want to ease them into something like that, mm -hmm. this is a good stepping stone, I e think. Even easing into Sushi Go, really. Yes. Because uh, I, so I didn't like play it, but I looked over the rules and then I looked at the cards. It was like. Okay, yeah, this is very like like you said before we started, like my first Yeah, this is like game. my first <laughs> drafting game. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually got to play this back in September when we were at our big Labor Day game week weekend thing and I didn't terribly enjoy it. I I don't know if it was just it might have also been the company I was playing with cuz in that particular game I was paired up with some people I'm like you I don't me. care you for you. You annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> You annoy me, but um, generally that's every game that I play in. <laughs> <laughs> you were not in my game, but I don't know. I 
I don't like the artwork. I'm not a fan of myth that kind of mythological <laughs> creature type thing. Caricatured fantasy. Yeah, I don't know. It's just it's not fantasy's not my style at all. And I I felt like I, I'm not a hate drafter. Like, well, I don't mind hate drafting. I don't like when people do it to me. And I felt like there was a lot of hate drafting going on for some reason. Well, I don't even know how. I yeah, don't even know how, but it was like. Because you don't even know, like, the yeah, challenges. Yeah, the cards are face down. Yeah, the challenges don't you don't even know until afterwards. So no, you know them at the beginning of the game. Like, you know what's being passed around. No, no, no I'm talking about the challenge things that you're trying to collect Oh, yeah, for. that's not what I'm. Yeah, they're face up. Oh, okay. Uh, so you know what you're shooting for, but. You don't know what anyone else is going for because their cards are face down. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, that's what you meant. I don't know. It just, or maybe w we just weren't taught 100% accurately. That happened a lot that weekend. It did. I, I tried to correct some rules and uh, they were defaulting to someone else that always teaches rules. And yeah. And apparently not correctly, but he wasn't in this game. So I don't know. I just didn't really enjoy it very much. So that I can't really say a whole lot, uh, but I'm not gonna say it's a terrible game. It's, I wouldn't say it's a terrible game. It's just not my cup of tea. Exactly, and like I said, it, the other people seem it to fits enjoy a it. it fits a niche, and like if that's and like I said, if you're a big drafting fan and if you have kids in the you know like elementary, this is an elementary school game. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, well, even middle school maybe. No, nah, I think if you're in the middle school, you'd be more worried about like. You'd be in the Sushi Go range. You'd be in the Sushi Go, or even, or even depending wonders. on the child, Seven mm -hmm. Wonders or Seven Wonders Duel. Yeah. Okay. Um, but so there's that. Uh, but I did want to talk briefly is that we played another one of the Time Stories games. We played Lumen Fide. Uh, oh. Yeah. And I was hesitant about this game going in because uh, one of the big things that I've heard in Time Stories is like everyone really likes uh, Asylum and then. Marcy Case is kind of like, uh, okay. And the Prophecy of Dragons is really good. And then everyone just kind of says it kind of tanks from there. Mm. Like it just kind of keeps going down from there. And specifically, there was also a thing that people were talking about. There was a lot of uh, translation errors because Space Cowboys is, I think, a French company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh. So I think there were a lot of – there when I was hearing things when it first came out, there was a lot of translation errors and such with Lumen Fide is mm. what I heard. Um we we ran into a couple of those where like that 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 the wording sounds wrong, um, but overall, I actually really enjoyed this set. Oh, oh yeah, good. like uh, this brought in a lot of the puzzles that were in like Asylum that I thought were really good. Mm. This had a couple of them, so that was kind of like what I was what I've been looking for in the in the Time Stories experience mm -hmm. that hadn't been in some of the other ones other than these challenges. There's a little bit more puzzles. I will say there is a big content warning and that I know that if the subject of religion and um, piety is something you might find offensive, mm. this is definitely you want to stay away from. Because a core mechanic of the game is there's kind of like a piety track mm. where like depending on specific choices you make, you can become more righteous or less righteous. Hmm. It, 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 the game is set okay. in the Crusades. Yeah, okay. you're yeah, a cru you're, you're Spanish Crusaders. In um, yeah, it, it's set during that period of time where there's like a heavy like that's Catholic presence. Catholic presence, also a lot of that like the ah, demons, demons. Mm -hmm. Huh. It turns out there might actually be demons, <laughs> but <laughs> so, well, regardless. But so I'm only saying that is that I know it. Could, it, triggers people. it could trigger somebody. So if you are that type of person, stay away. If yeah. that doesn't bother you, I found this really entertain. This one really entertaining. Awesome. That's good. Where where does this fall in the? So there's Asylum, Marcy Case, Prophecy. Mm -hmm. Then there's. Uh, are you talking about order? Yeah. yeah then yeah. there's. Uh, was it Under the Mask? Yeah. Okay. And then the, Expedition then Endurance. Expedition Endurance, which I didn't play. Mm -hmm. I was not there that day. But that one was interesting, too, um, in that the way it was described is you actually go back and they send you to the wrong time. <laughs> so you go back too late and, like, all this stuff has happened. Mm. And then you get reset, like, when you when you inevitably they set you up to fail the first run. Uh. 
and then when you reset, you go back like three days beforehand, so you see everybody like before things get bad. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, that sounds messy. Yeah. Oh, that's right. There's a couple other things I want to mention that I, other things I liked about this deck or this set versus the other ones is they put in like checkpoints basically to where like after you clear this, after you get through this set of cards, you always come back to that point. Oh. Nice. And it made it so much nicer. In fact, I think we only took like two to three runs to get through it, which was like a record for us. Does it have you... Does it because one of the mechanics is like the the time energy? Yeah. Does it have you like yeah, you at put this like checkpoint? A, you put like a marker. Okay. On what it. energy? You're yeah. On. You okay. put it like like when you hit like at this deck of cards, it's um. There's like three decks of cards, and when you get to one, that's like okay, now open this deck, and when this happens, now you put there's like basically, these cards can go back in the box. These cards can come out and put your dot put a marker here. This is where you're now resetting to. Oh, That's so really it, cool. it it doesn't have like if for some reason you spent too much energy before a checkpoint, it doesn't save with that amount of energy. It gives you a different. Uh, I'm not gonna say. Okay, <laughs> that might be too much information. <laughs> okay, that, that could be. Yeah, is it still following the storyline? Vaguely. Vaguely. Oh. It, it well. I've heard people yes. talking about the they're wrapping it up the the white box. Story yeah, the arc. Madame. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, that the there is story bits in there, and it especially in this one, not so much in uh, Under the Mask, but maybe a little bit. But in this one, there definitely is because that piety track also kind of works towards the two different organizations that are in the game. Gotcha. Bob is God. Ah. <laughs> Bob is God. You've angered the Bob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Bob, be with us. <laughs> Actually, no, because he's a douche. <laughs> Have you seen the Old Testament? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh, Colin. <laughs> I mean, Bob has wrath. I, I'm not talking about what you said, but, you know, Bob uh, has <laughs> quite a bit of wrath in the beginning and end of every one of those scenarios. Sure. So, yeah, that's there's that. All right. Uh, before we get to our game show... I do want to throw it out. Just another shout out to uh, our Patreon, our patrons. I want to say our Patreons. Uh, remember that you can go to patreon.com slash boards and swords to support us and uh, throw us a dollar per show or dollar per month. Sorry, not dollar per show. That'd be great. That's two dollars a month. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could do that. Not if you're not, not if you're Phil and I, that'd be <laughs> a lot of dollars per month. Wow. Mm. Six is a lot of dollars. <laughs> That's Six like, dollars. That's like almost a. We produce six podcasts a month. What else do you do? We do four episodes of Dirtbags of Holding. Oh, it's I a weekly realize, show. I didn't realize it was weekly. Ah, you record biweekly, but you split it up. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. Six bucks a month. That'll get you. That's one of our pleasures. No. that's almost. That's almost a. Uh, uh, Keyforge deck. That's all. Uh, you're, yeah, <laughs> you're ten cents away from breakfast at a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> hey Zach, Zach's in the chat room. All right. It has been a while because these fools went on vacation. Sorry, Sorry about that, folks. But yeah. Uh, so like I said, people like oh, yeah, Sean and vacation. Jay and John and Roger, all of them. Thank you for supporting us. And like I said, we are less than ten bucks away from hitting our mi first milestone, which is when we're gonna unlock bonus content. Like, we could talk Avengers and game spoilers. Yes. Like, isn't it great when... Beep. So great when Mickey Mouse popped out of there. <laughs> <laughs> oh I God. loved posting it, like, Facebook. I was like, spoilers, Batman dies. <laughs> no. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet, jerks. <laughs> All right. So, with that, it's time for uh, America's favorite game. And and that is our uh, the rank is right. It's been a while since we've done. It. Boo! It's been a while since we've done a rank and right. Boo! So rank, rank and right. Rank and right. Yeah, it's the roll and right version. Oh. I have to turn this now so Phil doesn't see. Y you do. Hey. Well, it's his handicap. <laughs> I'm not the one who rearranged all the seats. Sure. <laughs> so in case you're wondering, that out there. Uh, there's that handy website boardgamegeek.com that lists like every possible board game imaginable. And there's a handy-dandy feature that you can go hit random game. And so I did that a bunch today until I finally got some that actually have ratings on them. I know. <laughs> and so uh, I've got a couple of games here, and these guys are going to have to guess Price is Right rules. 
What? So you said there you found a bunch of games without ratings. Is there like a rating threshold? Like so many people have to rate, rate it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. I was going to be like, if not, just start putting some ratings in there. Yeah. <laughs> like no, it needs like a certain number before it. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, it's associated with your account, so you have to create a lot of accounts if you're going to do that. Yeah. Okay. It's too much work. You guys don't do like real work, do you? <laughs> like... Well. Anyways, so <laughs> what we have here is we have the first game is Axis and Allies, the Anniversary Edition. Oh. Mm. Which anniversary? The 2008 anniversary, okay. the 2008. <laughs> so this has the average user rating of 7.4. I did look up the geek user ratings, but as I was telling Colin earlier, the geek rates I think would give it too much away, <laughs> especially when you start comparing them to each other. Hmm. So the average user rating was 7.4. Average said? user rating is 7.4. In the war category, it's ranked 103. Oh. Yeah. So two to six players, a weight 3.13 out of five. To celebrate the 50-year anniversary of Axelon Hill. Or <laughs> Avalon Hill. Axelon Hill. <laughs> Avalon Hill. It's the Axis and Allies Anniversary div- Edition. Features the debut of Italy as the third Axis nation. The introduction of the cruiser unit to the naval lineup in the largest Axis and Allies board game to date. Or board to date. I can't read. I never learned to read. (laughs) So there you go. Uh, Colin, like I said, it has 2.2 thousand ratings. Wow. With the average rating of 7.4. What is the rating of Axis and Allies? And you said it was around 100 for the war game. 103. 103. Let's go with. And one. you're trying to get as close as close to one without without going, going without going under. You're not trying. You're trying to say a low uh, a more a higher numerical value. Uh, uh, yes. What's it? Integer. <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> yes. Like okay, so I am going to go with one thousand nine hundred thirty-seven. Okay. 1,938. You mean 36, (laughs) if you're trying to do one better. No, I think it's going to be lower than that. Wait. Well, if it is lower, then you you would have overbid. Yeah. Yep, you overbid. I meant higher. Like, I think... No, by lower... What are you you trying... Do you think it's closer to one? I think it's not closer to one. Then go much higher than me. Yeah. Because if it is one, hi- one higher than me, because you would have overbid at that ca- at that point. Like, say for instance, it's rated as ten thousand, then yeah. you would have overbid. Whereas if he said ten thousand and one, he'd be closer. Bill, say ten thousand and one. Wait, what did I say? You, you said, said nineteen thirty-eight. Yeah, you went one higher than me. Yeah, which means that if it was between, like for instance, oh, we played back this. In. We played back this in. game several <laughs> times. <laughs> If you said that and it was oh, like you're right, you're right, you're 1940 right. and he goes 10,000, he wins. He wins. Yeah, how you're how right. much of this do I need to cut? <laughs> <laughs> oh my word, I feel so stupid right now. Okay, um I'm rethinking on my answer. Let's say it is 4003. 4003. Okay, and what number are we pulling for again? We're pulling for the where it falls on the BGG overall rankings list. Overall ranking of every game they have. Okay. Um, Colin's cheating. Uh, no, I'm typing in the chat. Colin. So just to refresh, you said, Colin, you said how much? 1937. 1937. And you said 4,000? And three. And three. 4,003. I'm going to go with. 2985. 2985. Okay. The actual BGG rating mm. is 755. What? Yep. I should have said one other. I should have said 1936. What, what did you end up going with? 4,003. So it's me. Yeah, it's you. Ah! That's really high. Yeah, I was surprised. Yeah, wow. I wasn't sure how many war games were in the top thousand. I think if there was going to be one, <laughs> it'd be an Axis and Allies. So that if you think about it, it's rated one hundred three, mm-hmm. and it's rated at seven hundred and something. Yeah, 
So that means there are 100 war games that are higher up that list. Mm -hmm. Holy cow. Well, Root's a war game, right? Right. So, Twilight and that, Struggle. Yeah. yeah. That's in the top 200. Mm -hmm. All right. The next one we have is called Colossal Cave, the board game. <laughs> oh, that sounds so Somewhere bad. Somewhere nearby. is uh, This game is actually a uh, 2013 game. Hmm. Uh, somewhere nearby is Colossal Cave, where it is rumored that others have found fortunes and treasure and gold. Magic too is said to work in the cave, but beware: some who are enter, some who enter are never seen again. Uh, again? Shut up! All right. <laughs> again. That's how BT says it. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's apparently an ad adaptation of the classic text adventure Colossal Cave Adventure. Uh, yeah, eighty-three ratings. 5.0 user <laughs> average user rating, and in thematic, it's rated 1,004. Mm. Oh my! Yeah. So Colin, you won that one, so you got to go first again. I will go with. We'll do a cool 8,500. 8,500. Okay. 12,000. 12,000. Okay. I forget how many games are ranked. 84.99. <laughs> Eighty four ninety nine. Uh, you all bid too high. Nice. <laughs> nice. I knew I was good oh, with my yeah, twelve thousand. So, <laughs> there we go. So, so Colin, you want to try twelve thousand? You want to try high? again? Sure. Uh, this has a rank. This has a rank. Um, that is. The I know there's only like fourteen, fifteen thousand ranks. So I'm gonna say, <laughs> or unless that changed, I'll say fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Okay. 13,200. Okay. 13,199. <laughs> you all still overbid. <laughs> I just got to tell you. Cause There's more than 15,000. Well, there must be because this is ranked 16,139. Nice. Holy cow. <laughs> Bottom of the barrel. <laughs> right? That's terrible. <laughs> I'm still just, winning. <laughs> just, you didn't put the last game on the on your ranking, did you? Can you find like what is the last game <laughs> lowest ranked on BGG? Uh, didn't we say Monopoly? That was our that was our one dollar Bob. Oh, that is our one dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next, we have a game that Phillips actually played. Spyfall. Uh, no. no. <laughs> Dragonfire. <laughs> hey, I played that. Yeah. So Dragonfire is the 2017 deck building game. Uh, it is a cooperative deck building game set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. That's all. That's all. That's all I really Woo! need to say about it. Uh, 60, 90 minutes. It has a 1.5 thousand ratings. Wow. Average rating of 7.5, ranked 191 in thematic and 559 oh. in strategy. Colin, you're still the the leader. All right. What's the overall rank? Uh. I will go with 1301. 1301. Cindy. 1,000. 1,000. 2874. 2874. The actual answer is 1,012. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> that is so annoying. No, it's Philip. What did Colin say? I said 1301. Oh, never mind. Philip said 2000 yeah. or something. My bad. <laughs> that is so annoying. <laughs> this is annoying. I'm tired of going first. <laughs> that is 12 over. That's okay, because the next one's also a D&D &D board game. Uh, I did not plan this. It was literally <laughs> the next one that came up. Uh, Dungeons & Dragons Conquest of Nerath board game. I didn't play that. 2011. And uh, war has come to the Dungeons and Dragons world because that's never happened before. <laughs> what? It's such a peaceful and gentle yeah, place. I think this is one of those we turn D and D into a board. Like this is like one of the adventures, mm. ah. the D and D adventures games. Uh, one point four thousand ratings, six point nine in thematic. This one is ranked three hundred and twelve. Pretty low. So Colin, so it's ranked higher than the last one. Uh, the the number is higher. So there's your baseline. Well, in, in thematic, mm -hmm. yeah. In thematic, seven or uh, one point four thousand rating, six point nine. What's the what's the overall BGG rating? Uh, I will. I'm gonna go with thirteen oh one. Thirteen oh one. Okay. One thousand. One thousand. <laughs> thirteen hundred. 
1300. Uh, Wait. What? Never mind. Go ahead. It's okay. I won't go first anymore. If you <laughs> <guys>. <laughs> the actual rating is lower than all of y'all. <laughs> you mm. all got it wrong. Wow. So I think, was it 1300? What was the highest one? 1301. Oh, oh, you said 1300. Yes. Mm-hmm. You all bid two. Yeah. The we need to say clo- higher numbers. You bid too so, close to one. Yes. So, never mind. So this one, in the thematic games, this one was further from one than the other game was? Yes. Oh, I totally misheard that. <laughs> I thought this was closer That's to That's why one. we said this was higher, and I said, no matter, uh, oh. as far as number, the number is bigger. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my god. That's why I stuck with my, I was like, might be a sweet spot. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I stuck with mine, because I'm like, I thought it was the opposite of what you said. Let's, I wasn't paying let's attention. Let's go with... Uh, we'll say 1,500. 1,500, all right. 1,400. 1,400. 8,000. 8, <laughs> <laughs> Philip's going to get it by default. <laughs> 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 the actual rating is fifteen or 1,529. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so close. So close. <laughs> what did you say? 15, I got a point. 1,500. <laughs> nice. I got a point. Second like, place. Sweet, I don't get to go first anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now there's one that Colin's probably going to get really close because it's. I know it's on his shelf. Uh, oh, Robinson Crusoe. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Adventures on the Cursed Island, the 2012. So that's the first edition. That just popped up randomly. Yeah. Well, I think they're all under the same uh, listing though. And th- uh, it does have re. Uh, yeah, you're right. Uh, thematic wise, it's ranked as 13. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we're a little bit, we're a little bit higher up. It's a good game. Uh, it's, a g- it's a game created by Ignacy Chevichek. Mm-hmm. Poor tool. The author of Stronghold takes the players to a deserted island where they play the parts of shipwreck survivors confronted by an extraordinary adventure. With 27,000 ratings and an average <laughs> user rating of 7.9. Philip, what is this game's Board Game Geek rating? I'm going to give a hint. Mm-hmm. It's top 100. It's top 100? Mm-hmm. I don't know the exact number. Oh, crap. <laughs> it is in there. I will neither confirm nor deny. At least it used to be. It could have dropped. Not Unless you looked recently. Not that much. 90. 90. Okay. Colin? Oh, I still got to go after Phil? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can't go last? <laughs> it goes in the same direction. Uh, uh, let's go with... Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. All right. I was gonna say seventy-four. Seventy-four. So you said ninety. Ninety. You said seventy-four. Thirty-seven. And you said thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. The actual PGG rating <laughs> is forty-one. Ah. <laughs> I got a point. Well, that I almost went with forty, so that, that's, that still would have lost. That would, yeah. Oh, uh, two. We got two more. I was thinking top fifty. You get to go last this time. You do Yay! Get to go last this time. That's my goal in life. Robinson to go Crusoe last. is a great game. All right, this one is called Frantic. Oh, this sounds terrible. This doesn't even have a second category, oh, like you great. know, like a thematic or anything. <laughs> oh wow! Uh, in Frantic, you start with seven cards and try and get rid of your cards as quickly as possible. It's I just like throw them. <laughs> yeah, no, we're done. <laughs> if a player has discarded all their cards, the remaining players count the points in their hand. When the player reaches the maximum uh, agreed upon score, the player with the lowest score wins. It's Uno. It does sound like that. Mm-hmm. It's like reverse golf. You can okay, never mind. Anyways, uh it's a 2015 game apparently. 62 ratings. <laughs> <laughs> and a 6.8 average user rating. Wow. 5 to 45 minute played in time. What? <laughs> yeah. Well, Flux has that time, oh, right? So Cindy what is the average or what is the overall ranking? You didn't give me the average user rating. The oh, I said six point eight. Oh yeah, you did. So sixty two people voted. Average user rating Jeez. was a six point eight. I'll throw you a little bit of a bone here. The geek rating for Robinson Crusoe is seven point seven four one. The geek rating for Frantic is five point five four six. The geek rating for Colossal Cave. 
This is where I said it might be too easy if you start so getting these. So this one has a slightly higher geek rating than the Colossal Cave. Correct. All right. Then I'm going to say 15,000. 15,000. Uh, 12,000. 12,000. Uh, we'll go 14,999. 14,999. <laughs> 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 are, are we all too high? Nope. Oh, oh wow. No, but I hate you, Colin. <laughs> the average, the average, or blah, 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 the overall rank is 9,282. Philip! Nice. nice. <laughs> Whoa. Nice. All right. I don't hate you, Colin. So <laughs> it's it's looking like you need somewhere around a minimum of 62 ratings to get a. <laughs> yeah, I was starting to wonder. I thought it was like closer to 100 like ratings. Where's the but minimum? Yeah. I actually did a statistical analysis of games, and it showed that you needed about 70 to be considered in the top realm of games. Okay. Mm. If you look back at my post where I was talking about did 2018 actually suck for board oh, games. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Weird. And I think I made the comment like, it's like 70 is like the bare minimum of what you need to even be considered a game. Mm. Okay. Mm. So not a game yet yeah. if all of your backers go and <laughs> rank you <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last game we have for you is called mothership tabletop combat <laughs> hmm. that's Doesn't a 2016 work. game 2016 it's cool mothership name. tabletop combat cool 108 name. ratings all right the great space disagreement of 5406 has forced your entire colony to flee into the dark depths of outer space Wars. you're not alone other colonies too seek refuge from the war I'll scramble to harvest the valuable resources on undiscovered planets. Your mission, destroy all other colonies. Diplomacy is boring. <laughs> Shoot first, confirm if they were enemies later. <laughs> this is Philip's game. It's called Philip the Board Game. <laughs> this is just, see, all this type of stuff reminds me of... Uh, in, I'll cover uh, it up. That's, the, that's what the cover looks like. Yeah, it looks freaking awesome. <laughs> it just reminds me of in Wild Wild West. Like, not everything can be solved with your brand of shoot first, shoot later, shoot some more, or then when everyone's dead, try to ask a question or two. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, 108 ratings, average user rating of 7.3. Philip. Uh, the overall rating. It didn't have a secondary category? Nope. Okay, no secondary category. You said a 7.3. Mm-hmm. 100 and some change ratings. All right. I am going to go with... go with 9,000. 9,000. All right. Colin? I will say... 8,999. <laughs> you know what? Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say... 8,998. Do no, do what, what was the last one? The ranking, ranking of the last game? Uh, I got to pull it up. <laughs> Sorry. It was 9,282. 8,998. <laughs> <laughs> well, she gets it. <laughs> yeah, she gets it. No, but it was uh, 7,504. Nice. So not that far off. I was going to say 8,000, so I would have been okay with that. Yeah. You still, yeah. Hey, we have a three-way tie. We have a three-way tie. Because I was a jerk. Yeah. We All right, we should have made I that guess, last one. I guess oh, there was one All that right. we didn't get. If only there was a way I could get more. <laughs> the wild card. The random game button is broken. The internet's out. No. <laughs> no. Now I just have to do the. Uh, I have to do the keep clicking until I get in. Oh, I actually was. See, sometimes it does it when there's a re-implements, and I can click on that instead. Mm. Like mm -hmm. when I hit random game and there's nothing, or if an expansion pops up, I always go to the the base game. Yeah. So, but we did get one. Beyond the Gates of Antares. Oh, yeah. Nice 2015. Uh, this uh, is re implements bolt action and was re implemented by Warlords of Ekron. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it invites us to uh, beyond the gates of Antares. Invites us to a time when mankind has evolved into new and diverse species, the strangely powerful new humans. Masters of the Pan-Human Concord. This sounds just like the other game. <laughs> but 31 ratings. All right. Wait. 31 so ratings. So it. It's on there. There we go. 31 ratings, and it has an average user rating of 7.7. 7. 
All right, people There's don't. There's got to be a, hard, a, a heavy hitter here. That's right. Wow. Mm. And Cindy's first. Cindy oh, is first. first. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say 11,000. 11,000. Philip. I am going to say. I should have made you just write it down and should reveal. Have, yeah. Mm. Should have done this Jeopardy style. Well, we can. I'll retake my answer. <laughs> Too late now. I'm going to say 14,000. 14,000. So what was it? 11. 11, 14. And 13. And 13. The actual rating is 9,725. Oh, she comes victorious. back to win. Yay. Rigged. How? <laughs> How? <laughs> There's literally no way I could have rigged that. He just says that every time Cindy gets points. Exactly. Yeah. He does. That's when okay. sh they're running the games. That is. <laughs> Collusion is what that is. Oh, my gosh. So not true. Collusion. Not true. I'm going to steal your phone and look at all your Instagrams. If you can get in my phone, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> they're in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd all the files go? <laughs> Anyways, that's all we got this week. Philip, do you need to read off my screen? I do, I do. It's not, yeah, I do. Uh, <laughs> it's too, it's too. I was gonna say, I'm getting old. I need you to make it like really this big. This is on the a screen. terrible there exit. It. There you go. It happens. It happens. Um, I'm cold cakes. One, no, sorry. <laughs> I went where he clicked. All right, everyone, that was our show. If, Hang on. Yeah. Just, just start over. Just start over. <laughs> All right, everybody, that was our show. If you like this, then you should check out boardsandswords.com. You can check out our other podcast we got going on, The Dirt Bags of Holding, where we play some of the worst RPGs in the worst way possible. <laughs> oh, okay then. So, sometimes. Sometimes. If you like this show, you can email us your comments and questions at feedback at boardsandswords.com. You can follow us on Instagram at boardsandswordspod or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Boards and Swords Pod. Sorry, that changed. I just <laughs> okay. You should also follow our individual accounts. I'm Cindy Pastorius on Twitter and Instagram. I am Colecakes196 on Twitter and Instagram. I'm Chris the Prof on both. And I'm Phil the Dirtbag on Twitter. Uh, so we are also a part of the Dice Tower Network. Uh, for other great gaming podcasts, you can check out DiceTowerNetwork.com. And Cool Stuff Inc. does a lot to support the network, and you can go to their website and check out some awesome gaming deals at CoolStuffInc.com. Lastly, thanks again to all of our Patreon backers for supporting this episode, and go check out Patreon.com slash Boards and Swords to support us and to get some cool swag and to show us some love, because we love you guys, you peeps. Much love. And thank you also for listening. For watching, those that are in the chat room, thank you for hanging out with us. In the meantime, remember that every gamer has a story, and this guy's got a geek rating of 10 out of 10. Is that right? That is right. Mm. How many people made yeah. that rating? How many uh, accounts 100%. did you create to make that? <laughs> yeah, how 100%. many? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a spooked rating right there. The minimal Collusion! Minimal yeah. rating of one right here. Minimal <laughs> rating, yeah, that's right. One account rated Chris 10.0. I'm sure <laughs> my wife would verify that I have a 10 out of 10 geek rating. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure my family would, too. Yes. I, I don't think there's that many people that would disagree. No. no. Boom. Verified. Give it like 9.7. You're that one guy. I am and that It's going to be guy. like a thousand votes yes and one no. So one it's like 9.9. No. 9. Uh -huh. You're that 0.01% <laughs> of, of bacteria. <laughs> Hi. Phil the Dirk. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's got a fill rating of 1.0. Exactly, man. <laughs> no, it's a number. Wait, no. <gasps> Wait, Wait, did what? you just say that's a number? 1.0, yeah. that's a number. <laughs> no. it's oh, it's thumbprint. Yeah, it's thumbprint or passcode. Three days, that's tomorrow. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Are you trying to hack into his phone? <laughs> that's like the one line I can definitely always pull out. Like, Which one? No matter what situation it is. Uh, it's the one where uh, he has to go on a vision quest from like the Indian casino. Mm. Uh, or no, no, sorry. No, it's not that one. Uh, Family guy. I said that. Uh, family guy. Okay. There we go. Gotcha. I said family guy. I didn't hear.